Hi, I'm George Cow, and I'm excited to be here with Alex Baisley today. I'm uh, really uh, looking forward to having him share a particular writing exercise that has been helpful to many of his clients. Let me first say hi to you, Alex, and then I'll share your background. Alex, thanks for Hello. being here. Hello. Hi, yeah. George. Yay. Hey, it's great to be here with you. So, um, so Alex, you have such an interesting background. You uh, have been a commercial diver doing underwater welding. Uh, and at the same time, you have been 20 years as a Reiki healer <laughs> and, a, and a meditator. And uh, for more than 10 years, you've been helping people um, clarify their calling, right? You, like, you help people take their you know, thousand interests and experiences and the challenges they've been through and, and all of that and just bring that to a unifying focus that they could turn into a business or into a career. Uh, it's called the, the the Big Dream Program, right? Correct. Yeah. Correct. So, um, anyway, I'm just excited for you to share. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, well, be, before we get into that writing exercise that we were just talking about before before we started recording, um, tell us about um, kind of who your who your ideal client is, and or one of your ideal clients' uh, sort of um, profiles. Who who is that person, and when what 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 does that person come to you uh, for help with? You know, I'm probably not terribly unique in the sense that uh, the business that I now have, the Big Dream Program, these past 15 years was, a, was an answer to my earlier younger self. Uh, the younger self who um, uh, had, had was doing a job that he did not like, um, underwater welding, be, being underwater. I'm really skinny to begin with. And uh, being underwater all day is really cold. Holy cow. But it also just wasn't, um, I'm going to use the word spiritually fitting or something. It, it just, I, I just felt like I was meant for something in this world. And I didn't know what it was. And I don't know how many people experience the pain of that. Um, but certainly the people that come to me as clients do, it, uh, it's a form of depression. It's a form of physical pain, I think, when you're, um, mental pain for sure when you're doing something day in day out for eight hours a day or more and it feels like a waste of time like you're not this is not what I'm meant to be doing with my life but I don't know what and I remember spending weekends over years and years and years reading self-help books reading anything journaling anything to try to figure this out and it took me a long time I'd say it took me 10 years of that I was underwater for nearly 10 years and uh, in that 10 years, I spent the grand total when I added up all my hours of a half a year of my life has been underwater. And although that there, there were cool aspects to that, certainly it's, 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 it's a whole other world and it is nice to have experienced it. Um, I'm so glad to be out of it. And so it's kind of a long answer to your question, but is uh, when, when someone feels like they have uh, some kind of greatness inside or at least some kind of a connect with the world doing what they're supposed to be doing, um, I think we feel when it's missing, even if we don't know exactly what it is. Um, there's a lot of pain that goes at, with that. And if it goes on for a long time, it can often become illness too, uh, a physical illness, sickness. Um, it, uh, it's, a, it's a cloud in families uh, often. And now I'm going from my now lens that I've worked with lots of clients. Um, there can be a lot of uh, dismal feelings that one brings home from work they don't uh, like. Uh, to home. Yeah. And, and I just want to say they're, they're, this is so common. I mean, uh, you know, I think, I don't know if those watching uh, are familiar with the recent Gallup. Uh, well, when I say recent, really the past you know, couple of years, right? Like right. when they survey um, just working people all around the world, you know, Gallup, which is, you know, known for their surveys, it's yes. something like 80% of all working people are dissatisfied with their work, like they don't feel like they're engaged, right? So it's wild. It's, it's, this is this is this is more this is more of the norm than it is, you know, anything. People than the fringe, way. yeah, right, exactly. And, and I suppose a lot of people would um, uh, approach this kind of problem differently. I'm certainly not the only opinion on the block. Thank goodness there needs to be quite a few flavors of how to deal with any human problem or challenge, uh, but particularly for me and thereby most of my clients, all of them, um, the problem then comes that they have about 1,107 ideas about what to do next. And they, they have journals, you know, full of them. They have books 
on the shelf, same as I did, right? That's why I totally get this. I'm totally empathetic. It's like, I see you, I get you, I get exactly what that feels like inside, right? No, but what it felt like for me. Um, but they have all these ideas. Should I be a carpenter? Should I work with my hands? Or maybe I should uh, be a yoga teacher? Or maybe I should go back to school and become a, a whatever, whatever. Um, and a lot of these decisions have feel like there's a lot of risk to them. Certainly financial risk if we're going back perhaps to university or to study something or take a big expensive course or else just time risk. Like I don't want to make the wrong decision. What if I choose to be the, the, the yoga teacher and I don't, I don't like it? And what I found, uh, what, what was the biggest help for me was that all of these kind of ideas, what if you package them all together and see what they look like? if they're all in one package together. And I know you do this work too, George. So we have some overlap here. I'm so glad we're both, I'm so glad. Well, I, I actually, anyway. I actually uh, don't really do this work as much anymore. Um, most of okay. my clients come to me with the marketing help. So yes, I'll be sending people to you for, for, for this, this kind of thing. <laughs> I'm, I'm delighted. Um, it's a kind of a pain that I usually am pretty successful helping people fig figure out. And so basically my, my, mantra i suppose or what people kind of laugh at me for <laughs> in a good way i think is that i tell them for heaven's sakes don't choose if you're trying to choose between being a teacher and being yoga and being a carpenter and whatnot don't choose until you've heard me out just let's talk about this for a little bit and then i try to see what happens when you put things together like um, a story of the, the the woman who wanted to teach yoga but she was also into wild edibles and that we could and and from a philosophic uh, saving the world standpoint that if we could learn more about how to forage and feed ourselves she had all these uh, wonderful ideas about that and knowledge um, also loves uh, canoeing and wilderness camping and stuff you know so should I be a wilderness guide should I become a Red Seal chef and do wild edibles? Should I? Don't choose. Let's talk about if is there a way to put them together. How about the wilderness yoga connection? Whereupon all of the people come for a retreat. They go out for a weekend or a week and they go into the forest. Whereupon they eat wild edibles and get all of these things. They do meditation. They do yoga. And of course they canoe to get there. Right? And so when we put ideas that were kind of normal-ish. Maybe the wild edibles is a little bit fringe, but that's wonderful nonetheless. But if you take ideas that are fairly normal and you stick them together where they don't normally stick together, you suddenly create something highly unique. Um, and, I, not, and that's when the, the feeling of integrity starts to happen inside. Like, oh, all the bits that make me George all fit in this package, right? Yeah. Um, and I would argue that even from a marketing financial standpoint, mm -hmm. that um, it's a pretty good foundation to start on when you're terribly unique. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, it's, it's uh, you know, one of the, uh, the gods of marketing, uh, Seth Godin, right? Uh, yes. <laughs> he, he, he calls it the purple cow. Right, which is um, cow, not K A O, but C O W. <laughs> uh, it's like right. you know, it, it, imagine you're you're driving along a field and you see a bunch of cows, and you know, either you you drive along and you don't really pay attention because you've seen you've seen cows before, and uh, okay. but then suddenly there's a cow that's purple. <laughs> you're like, wait, what? What's that? And you you pay attention not not because the cow is waving you down, but because the cow is naturally unique, and and you're saying yes. that when you are able to put all these things together your marketing message is going to be unique. It's you're not just another yoga instructor. Right? Exactly. Exactly. Yes, for sure. Um, so that's what I've been doing for all this that's time. All, that's, and I that's find great. it so uh, yeah. rewarding. Yes. And, but that like this leads into the, the other bit that we were talking about. Yes. Time, the writing exercise. Is something I want to yeah. share just before I do though, if anyone is, well, for anyone who's gotten this far in our interview and thinks, yeah, that sounds pretty cool. Um, let me give you a, a, a tip for what to do with that piece of information about blending stuff together. Well, certainly you can come to my website and, you know, I have e-kits on this matter and so on. One of them is free. Um, but is to ask this question. Instead of what would I like to do, which lends itself to thinking ideas like carpenter, accountant, yoga teacher. It lends to itself to labels. Instead of what would I like to do? Try a different question. How would I like my life to be on a Tuesday? Try that one. Think it through, brainstorm it through. I'd like to get up at this time. I like to meditate in the morning. I like to do X, Y, and Z. 
answer that and then move to Wednesday in your mind and say, well, if I did that on a Tuesday, would I want to do it all over again on a Wednesday? Maybe so. But when I walk clients through day by day like that and then into week by week and so on, what always happens is that even for the most introverted person, which I am, I'm an extreme introvert, even for the most introverted person, we need connection with people and desire connection with people. And we like for our art, whatever that is, to be appreciated in the world, if at all possible, whatever, whatever that is, our message, our expression. Um, and so when I go through this uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday with people, people will always start to add things to that list, like I connect with a bunch of like-minded people, will show up in some format on this list. It might be on a Wednesday night, it might be on a Thursday morning, it might be every day, whatever. That's the opening to, and then think, okay, well, if I'm with like-minded people and, I, and it's on a Wednesday evening, now I think of my top three or five interests, I'm canoeing, uh, uh, blah, 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 whatever they are, and, and then think, is it possible I could create an experience for people like that, that kind of personality of people on a Wednesday night, because that's when I want to do it, that blends two or three or five of these things together, what could that look like? And then brainstorm it. And that would be my tip for anyone wanting to give this a start. That's very cool. That's very cool. Thank you. For Using that. time as the canvas rather yes. than concepts like plumber. That's, well, that makes sense because time is our, our canvas for our calling. It, it is, we are here, you know, in limited time and it is, uh, yeah, that, that, that makes sense to, to draw that, like, draw it like that. Right, right. So, so this writing yeah. exercise, um, yeah, you, so, you were just saying how much it helped you and then you started sharing it with your clients and helped them a lot, but yeah. Yes, yeah, so, so like to connect these threads, I've been at the work that I just described um, for a long time and teaching workshops and traveling around Canada and the States and so on. And to be honest, George, I'm a Reiki master. I teach meditation, I should know better. I burnt out. I burnt myself out. I the candle at both ends. I wasn't paying as much attention to my mental health, to my rest as I could have. Probably some, I'm always working on self-healing. So probably there were a few factors from early life that were purging out. Whatever the causes, I went, I went down. And how it looked was I started dropping more and more balls, more and more emails not responded, not getting back to clients. Uh, apologizing to you know try to fix it but then another three days would pass and I found it harder and harder to engage with my my inbox uh, harder and harder to um, speak with people even even with friends and I in hindsight I, it's all very clear but at the time it was all happening and I was starting to freak out and like a lot of us I depend uh, my my money on my business and, and I'm I'm dropping my business it's falling through my fingers like sand um i didn't realize at the time but it's classic burnout plus depression kind of thing and on top of that i felt like a fraud really because i'm a healer you know for despite all this big dream program business underneath it i'm a healer i do a lot of energy work with most of my clients and so kind of felt like jesus what kind of a healer you know <laughs> ends up in this predicament so long short long story short george it lasted a year and it was a big mess. It really frigged up my life, my income, frigged up friendships. Uh, there's one friendship I still haven't been able to fix uh, since. Um, anybody who's been through anything like this or even remotely like this will be nodding their heads going, yep, that's what happens. When... And all of my healer friends, all of my uh, resources, my books, my Reiki, my meditation, nothing could fix this for me personally. And I didn't know why. And so this went on for quite some time until really I couldn't do much more than sit, in, sit on the couch. Uh, whew, it was a really, really tough time. And then this one morning, this is what I'm going to share with people and they can try it for themselves. This one morning, I sat on the couch, phone rang, and it was a friend uh, calling, worried about me, and I couldn't even answer the phone. And I, I sat down on the couch and I thought, oh, I just don't have the capacity to do anything. And then this, this thought went through my head, George, and it saved my life, I suppose. It came out of nowhere and it was just this little thought. And it basically said, yeah, that, 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 
That sounds true, all right, but you did just have the capacity to brush your teeth. And I had this uh, goosebumpy sort of feeling come over me. And I thought, yes, that's true. I had just brushed my teeth. And then the second line was, and you just had enough capacity to make a tea for yourself. True. That's true. And then a few more ideas started coming. And I reached beside me, grabbed my journal and my pen. And by the end of that day, I can't just remember now, but it was at least 100 lines, if not more, that I had written, I have more than enough capacity to brush my teeth. It's true I don't have enough, more than enough capacity to answer the phone, pick up my business, deal with a client, make any money. All of those things are true. I'm not trying to avoid that issue or be Pollyanna about it. What I just noticed was that at the time, I, I thought, I'm Fox Newsing myself. <laughs> uh, it's like I'm only picking the bad parts uh, to notice here right now. And the bad parts are, are bad. Uh, but it's not the whole picture. So I thought, well, at least let me be honest with myself. It's true I can't do all those things, and I feel just so guilty and horrible about it. But it's, I have more than enough capacity to brush my teeth. I have more than enough capacity to make a tea. I have more than enough capacity to stand up. I have more than enough capacity to sit down. I have more than enough capacity to sit upright. And I started to think about people that could not do those things. Or if I were on my deathbed, how friggin' good it would feel to be able to sit up on a couch. Holy shit. And so I wasn't trying to make myself feel better. I was just trying to get a clearer picture of the, the bigger picture. By the time that day was done, I was absolutely on my way out of uh, a complete burnout and, and depression and amazed about it. The next day, I, I, I dug out the journal and I started again. And I just, anything that I had just done, however simple it was, I, I wrote down. And it was only in hindsight that I realized that in, in energy healing, in Buddhism as well, and I'm sure most forms of healing, there's a kind of an adage that what we focus on grows. Uh, if we could use a terrible example, we have two children and we pay attention to one and we don't pay attention to the other. We can imagine how that's going to work out, right? Living systems need attention. So what if all the good parts of me that are f strong enough, thank you very much, um, is a living system and I've been giving it zero attention. And so from a Reiki standpoint or an energy healing standpoint, I realized what I had been doing. So I started this religiously uh, writing this list every day and because I couldn't do much else, I was pretty good at it. Uh, within weeks, I was back to a kind of a semi-normal life. I was getting my relationships back. I was getting uh, being out in the world back. I still couldn't pick up my big dream program business. I felt too vulnerable about it. But I still needed to earn money, so I sent an email to all my neighbors on my, on my cul-de-sac street here and said, if you need any handiwork, um, I charge X per hour and I could use the, the work. And I booked months worth of <laughs> walls and shelves and plumbing and everything uh, on the neighbors. But it just felt good to be able to be um, in charge of myself again, I guess, and, and my results. Every day I did this exercise. What it led to was I did pick up my big dream program again. It was better than when I had set it down. I've been able to fix most of the troubles that I caused at that time, not all. Um, I have some scars, as anyone does who lives. Um, but I became very curious about whether this would work for anybody else. So by the time I, had, I started having clients again, my big dream program work and stuff, I, I started sharing this a bit to see what would happen, and the results blew me away. I, I just couldn't believe it. I, I, I felt almost cocky about it. Like I thought, there, man, there, there's hardly a depression or at least a, a dark feeling that can't be changed with this thing, at least for the right person. I became very committed to sharing it as much as I could. And so it not only with just dark times, but it's just a strength builder. So I came to call this exercise the capacity generator. Um, if there's some kind of capacity we don't feel we have enough of, whether it's strength or love or anything else, we can put that word in the thing and then go list 25 ways where we do, in fact, have a tiny bit of that thing. Um, to see what would happen. And so it wasn't just people that were having a really tough time. It was other clients who just wanted a bit more strength to do bigger things. Um, they would take on this exercise and the results were just 
Oh, it's just wild, George. I, I like I. Wow. It's it's awfully meaningful, I must say. Yeah. Um, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. There's there's so much here. Okay. Um, I, I paused the recording because I had to. I had I had I had to change rooms here, but uh, I'm I'm looking forward to this is this is too good to to complete the conversation so quickly. Um, wow, that that is a powerful uh, thing you've created, a, a tool. Um, thank you for sharing it. Uh, genuinely, I, I really I, I encourage those anybody watching this. You could tell how much value Alex gives, how much caring he has um, for all of us. And so if that, if that's that, if that was useful to you, I just want to say, I hope we'll, we'll go to Alex's website and, and buy one of his e-kits just to, just to, just to say, say thanks. Um, okay. So this is powerful. And, and you actually have a, well, you have an e-kit on this, right? That, that I have an e-kit on this, George. Yeah. So from, from my point of view, I have a business and I, and I need to earn uh, money yes. and all that. I, I like to even earn lots of it sometimes when I can, but that being said, I want to make a difference, George. That's that's how I'm wired. That's what I want to do. Um, I this this he kid. It wasn't just the word capacity. We used it. We tested this out with a lot of people over hundreds of thousands of lines. In the end, um, we use different words. A person that doesn't feel they have enough love. Well, I, that's true, maybe. But I do have more than enough love to hear this video. I do have more than a lot. I are someone who doesn't have enough support so we can change the wording, you know? And so I put together an e-kit and quite honestly, I, I priced it fairly, but I didn't price it cheaply either. Um, I did a 10 module e-kit teaching all of this. Um, and I was charging $111 Canadian for it. And I, I may again, depending on when a person is listening to this, but here's the thing, George, that the climate, the people who are out doing amazing work trying to ensure our climate uh, healthiness, survival even, people who are out there on the front lines um, in, in, in helping with uh, new immigrants, people who are helping with peace, people who are helping kids in school cope better by bringing mindfulness or EFT, and all the people on the front lines out there. I want them to have a chance to know about this kit. If they don't like it, that's fine. If it doesn't work for them, that's fine. But I want them to know about it. And I think these are the people doing the work that all of our lives and at least quality of life will depend on um, uh, down the road. I want to reach them. I want to support them more than the people that I have now. So that's a long way of saying I took the kit. Instead of $111, it's now $10. And there's a there's a coupon code right on the web page. How about, how about $11.11? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a good idea. I didn't think of it at the yeah. time. But no, I, um, I mean, gosh, so even that's a if, start. thank you. And I mean, for those who, who can afford it, I feel like $111 is worth it for a tool that can change your life. And, um, uh, okay. Are you still there? I'm still here. Can okay. you hear me? Give, yeah. Give me, give me a second here. Okay. We're, we're still here. Good. Um, sorry about that. Um, so the, um, Yes, I have the e-kits and then I'm developing more, especially now. This is a very uh, current thing in my business that I'm putting particular focus on to try to get this to the right people. So I have group program about to start and depending again when someone listens to this. Great. And I have one-on-one -on -one, uh, sessions dedicated specifically to this work. So even if a person doesn't want my help with what to do with their lives kind of thing. Yeah. And so just that's kind quick, of the long and short of how I'm yes. trying to share this. What is, what, uh, what, what's, what is the e-kit? It is to tell us specifically like what when people get it what what do they receive right right it's called the capacity generator e kit if i didn't say that already i might have and it's basically uh, 11 modules covering 10 days and the, so the modules are, are like written text or t tell us more oh i beg your pardon there, there are videos about oh, five good. to ten minute video in each Great. one and i explain Great. uh more than what i could explain here um also some of the the energy kind of science behind it and so on. And then there's a place for each day. What we learn, this is, this is critical in case I don't say it again. It's what we learn is that 25 lines a day is a magic number. It is a threshold. Uh, the people that were willing to test this for me years ago and do lots and lots and lots of lines. Um, if they did fewer than 25 a day, uh, there's, it probably worked, but it would be like me doing one push up a day. You know, I, I'm just not seeing the results in the mirror kind of, it's probably working, but 
Um, so we found 25 lines a day was ideal. And all a person has to do, and the e-kit explains it, is take your journal or your tablet or whatever around the house with you or through the day and just take note of something that you did very easily. I have more than enough capacity to lift so this glass. You, you don't have to write all 25 in one sitting. No, it can be throughout the day. People right. fall into two camps. They like to do it all at once or they don't like to do it all at once. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, Alex, I, I know there's a lot in, in that e-kit and I'm going to get it myself. Um, uh, so thank you so much for, for what, you, what you've done here and just for everything you've already shared in this video. I hope those who are watching this are inspired and uh, if you have any questions, obviously feel free to comment below and I'll make sure Alex uh, sees it. Um, and I will put the link to the e-kit and to Alex's Big Dream program. Uh, both will, will be in the links of, uh, of this video or the notes of the video. And um, uh, I'm so last, grateful. That's great. Yeah, absolutely. And um, yeah, and, and lastly, please do feel free to share this video with other people um, that could benefit from that kind of, uh, I mean, again, anybody who is feeling some burnout or depression or or at the risk of that please do share this with them because I, I know that this may who knows may save their lives so. thank you thank you very much and i care about this work so deeply that even if a person has listened to this video it's if you don't want to buy the e-kit or don't want anything that i'm offering that's totally fine but i'd like to hear from you like if you tried those lines that i just shared and you've got some benefit from it or some experience some perspective I want to hear it. That helps me help more people. And it also helps my ego, quite frankly. Uh, being an entrepreneur can be kind of a lonely experience. So if we have an impact, it's awfully nice to hear about it. So oh my God. feel it's, free to reach out regardless. Yeah. Knowing that we are making an impact is like, is like life for entrepreneurs. I mean, for those yeah. of us who are, who are here um, for the meaning, for the, for the impact, for the you know, service, not just for the money. So, so please, yes, anybody who tries this and, and finds it helpful, or and and of course, please do. Um, I I I like to say support because I believe that all of us, you know, I see this whole thing as an entrepreneurial community. Um, you know, we're we're supporting each other with 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 comments, with with uh, our, our 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 purchases, you know, with everything. So if you if you can and 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 uh, are able to, well, ten dollars, eleven dollars is totally worth it. So I I would just encourage everybody who found this helpful to go and get the capacity generate e kit. The link is in the notes of the video. So thank you so thank much, you Alex, so for, much. for your for this interview and for your work. George, I'm delighted to have the chance to share a little bit more broadly than what I could do in my own circles. I'm very grateful. Thank you so much. Thank you.